Well, good morning and thanks for choosing Fox 10 News on this Sunday morning. I'm Lee Peck. Meteorologist Matt Barentine joining me in studio. Matt, uh, much warmer, a uh, dramatic <laughs> difference. Yeah, it's some 20 degrees plus warmer yeah. out there this morning and we got the rain. A uh, number of showers coming down right now. That'll continue throughout the morning. So something to think about as you make your Sunday plans. It's it's raining out there for a good bit of the area, which is expected. We've been talking about this for a number of days. We are expecting rain on Sunday morning and here it is. You can see the uh, two lines of showers really uh, passing on through at the moment. I'll zoom on down into uh, Baldwin County, Southern Baldwin County down here on Gulf Shores to Orange Beach. You're getting good steady rain down here up around Alberta as well. Light rain at Foley and some light sprinkles over around Magnolia Springs. A little farther to the north, you have a little shower headed your way over in Seminole. And as we head over to the Panhandle, some very light rain here across Pensacola proper. Some heavier showers over around Milton at this time. Inland areas dealing with some light rain up around Grove Hill. Back over to Citronelle, more of a moderate shower there. So a number of showers out there and basically things are damp and they're going to be here for the next couple of hours as we have all this moving on through. None of this will be severe for us. There could be a few rumbles of thunder over here around Panama City with that, but the rest of us, we're just looking at rain. And there's the future cast. 9 a.m. shows this back in line coming through Mobile area uh, by 11 a.m. around Baldwin County. And then after that, moving on through the panhandle. And we begin to actually clear out. And this looks like the clouds will clear out as well. So we'll see some sunshine out there this afternoon after this uh, damp and wet morning here for us across the area. So here's your planner. That all shows up here. You see the rain chances staying through the morning. Temperatures getting quite warm, low 70s here this afternoon. And then as we head to the afternoon, you can see that sunshine looking absolutely actually pretty nice. It's going to be a tale of two different days, damp and gray and wet morning. Then we have a, a pleasant and warm afternoon with sunshine returning. So it's going to be quite the day here for your Sunday. If you, if you don't like the weather now, just wait a few hours. All right, thanks, Matt. Mobile police investigating a homicide. This after finding a man with a fatal gunshot wound early yesterday morning. According to MPD, officers responded to a call of one shot on Randlett Drive. When they arrived on the scene, officers found 21 year old Bradley Nall dead. No other details are known at this time. Well, new this morning, two mobile teens behind bars this morning. According to the Mobile County Sheriff's Office jail log, they're both facing a murder charge. The details on the crime the two allegedly committed has not been confirmed. Authorities booking 18 year old Mary Cheyenne Butler and 19 year old Selena Grace Tisdale just after 7 p.m. The 1B group uh, includes, uh, for example, uh, educators, uh, which includes uh, daycare K through 12 and institutions of higher education, uh, is going to include um, uh, certain certain frontline manufacturers. It's going to include food and ag, uh, gro grocery workers, uh, agricultural workers, uh, public transit, corrections officers, uh, postal service workers. Well, if you haven't heard, the state of Alabama easing up on COVID-19 vaccine eligibility restrictions. Uh, the age cutoff is going down to 65 and older. Plus, it'll include a list of people whose occupations uh, put them in close contact with the public, like education workers, child care providers, corrections officers like you just heard, and food and agriculture workers. Uh, grocery store employees, manufacturing workers, public transit employees, and judicial workers. Uh, phase 1B of the COVID-19 vaccination effort across Alabama, bringing relief for hundreds of thousands of people eagerly awaiting their chance to be vaccinated. Now, one of them, a local grocery owner, Reza Hajizi, Hajizi's small store, Food Pack International, is uh, filled with rows of shelves stacked tall with products from around the world. Now, for people who come from across the Gulf Coast looking for products only his store has, Hajizi is essential. Uh, the 72 year old will now have access to the COVID-19 vaccine as Alabama moves into this next phase. Uh, it's a relief for Hajazi, who says he'll fall in line as soon as the opportunity opens up. At night I can sleep comfortable that I did not get the virus. You never know who is carrying that virus and comes inside. So it's very important for us to be vaccinated so we do not transfer it to our customer. Although more people will have access to the vaccine, health leaders remind us there's still a critical shortage for vaccines. They ask healthier people to hold off on getting the vaccine to allow those who are at high risk a chance to be vaccinated first. 
Well, there are a few clinics coming up in Mobile County for first responders and people 75 and older. Uh, the Sims Health Center on Wolf Road will be hosting a clinic on Tuesday. Citronelle hosting a drive through on Thursday at Family Health on North Mobile Street. And Belsall Middle School in Mount Vernon will host a clinic next Saturday. All three clinics will be held from 9 a.m. until 2. Vaccines will be provided on a first come first serve basis. They also remind you to bring your ID and remember if you live in Baldwin County, current eligible people can now get vaccinations at OWA starting next Tuesday and Thursday. Vaccinations will start at nine in the morning until three in the afternoon. Uh, the drive through clinic will be located in the parking lot on the north side of the park across from Trattoria Pizza. This is also first come first serve and it's restricted again to people 75 years and older, first responders and healthcare workers. Well, if you attend any of the Mobile County vaccine events or the event at OA, you'd have to be 75 or older again for the event starting February the 8th. The age group expands to 65. Well, health officials say COVID-19 vaccines prevent illness, but do not necessarily prevent infection. If someone tests positive and uh, doesn't get sick, the vaccine has worked as intended. Now, according to the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, if someone tests positive within a few weeks of receiving the second dose, it may be because the vaccine hasn't yet fully kicked in. Well, the US surpassed 26 million cases of coronavirus. The death toll has now topped 438,000 people and the number of deaths reported daily continues near a record level. In response, starting tomorrow, the CDC is requiring people to wear a face mask uh, when using any form of public transportation. That includes buses, trains, taxis, airplanes, boats, subways, and rideshare vehicles traveling into, within, and the outside of the U.S. Yesterday, Maryland became the second state to report a case of the more transmissible South African variant of COVID-19. Previously only found in South Carolina, health experts believe the South African variant could worsen the spread of coronavirus here in the U.S. Amid the bad news about the pandemic, Johnson & Johnson is expected to seek approval from the FDA for its new COVID-19 vaccine. While it appears to have lesser uh, efficacy uh, than the approved Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, Johnson & Johnson's only requires a single shot. Well, President Biden is urging Congress to pass the nearly $2 trillion COVID relief package as Democrats consider moving forward without Republicans who are not on board with the hefty price tag. Fox News correspondent David Spun has the latest on this story. President Biden says the time to act is now. He spent almost two years on the campaign trail touting his relationships with Democrats and Republicans in Congress, but the reality of gridlock is certainly settling in. Remember, Democrats have control not only of the White House and the House of Representatives, but also the Senate. Biden says he would like to move things forward in a bipartisan manner first. If Republicans don't want to jump on board, he says he'll have to move forward anyway. Millions of people are out of work, unemployed. Future millions of are held back for no good reason other than our failure to act. So the choice couldn't be clear. We have learned from past crises the risk is not doing too much. The risk is not doing enough. There's no question this measure is expected to easily pass in the House. Then it will go to the Democratic-run Senate. Some senators to watch, moderates like retiring senators Pat Toomey and Rob Portman, also West Virginia's Joe Manchin and Maine's Susan Collins. There are 50 Democrats and 50 Republicans in the Senate. However, as per the Constitution, the Vice President Kamala Harris will be the tie-breaking vote, and you can expect she'll vote to pass the measure. Remember, it was former President Trump who wanted to give Americans $2,000 in direct payments. The question, will those Republicans who supported President Trump support President Biden? At the White House, David Spunt, Fox News.